So this is, a, a, we'll call the meeting to order, the Senate Natural for Resources and Energy. It's Friday the 27th. We're having a meeting to take a look at um, planning really for the coming week. So as you may have heard from the pro tem, uh, he would like us all to keep our eyes uh, first and foremost on the COVID pandemic and how it affects anything related to our areas of jurisdiction. Um, I, I sent out an email to people with an outline of things for today. So if you haven't checked email in the last 24 hours, you may want to look at an email from me to you all. Um, we're going to have two meetings next week in which we'll really take some testimony from people, looping back to people in on water issues, solid waste issues, energy issues. Um, and those meetings are scheduled uh, for 10 to 12 on Tuesday and Thursday next week to try to uh, stick with the regular schedule. What I wanted to do with folks today was just one, make sure we all had a sense of what that plan was, what our priorities are beyond the next week. So towards, uh, you know, maybe in Thursday's meeting, we'll see how it goes. Um, we can be looking forward to doing non COVID-19 related bills the week after. Um, and so I wanted to encourage people to start thinking about we actually have six bills all in motion at the moment. Um, either they're on the floor or in another committee. It's something we've been looking at. When we left on the 13th, there were six bills um, sort of in, as I just said, in motion. There were other, a lot of other bills on the wall, um, two of which were you know, major house bills that there's a broad interest in, the global warming and the Act 250 bill. So. I just wanted to check with you all. Um, the short list I put out is much shorter than the, I didn't actually count, but there must be something like 40 bills in committee. So I'd like to go through, um, do two things. One, go through those areas of jurisdiction and think aloud as a group about who we might wanna hear from, check back in with next week on COVID-19 related stuff and then start thinking too about when you look at the bills and committee or the email I sent out, how would you prioritize them? Um, it's unclear right now how the session's gonna unfold, you know, and talking with the pro tem at some length the other day, he believes we're gonna have, um, you know, time to get to many bills. Um, oh, an unhelpful dog here. Uh, just a moment. I can't do much about this at my desk while. All right, <laughs> back again. Um, so the, we should be thinking, no one knows exactly how many bills we'll get to in the long run. I guess that's the answer. Um, but we will get to things more than just what we had teed up as a crossover. Um, so with that said, uh, I'm going to, doubling back to clean water. Um, last time we checked in, uh, Michael put together that helpful memo uh, summarizing what's going on out there. I thought it would be helpful for us to check back in um, with ANR DEC on the kind of public drinking water, wastewater, all that kind of stuff to see if everything's working fine or people are starting to run into, for instance, staffing issues. Um, and that brought up, uh, there's a Vermont WARN system that allows municipalities to transfer equipment and staff between municipal wastewater or public water supply systems. So it'd be just good to know that if people have worked out that um, got those agreements in place, stuff like that. Beyond that, we have, you know, a lot of work going on with um, the Vermont Clean Water Act. And I honestly have no idea what's going on out in the field um, in terms of implementation. I mean, there's at least a couple of sides. One is all the kind of data, data gathering stuff that goes on. There's regulatory stuff that goes on. And then there's people doing things like building swales, ditches, bunkers, um, and all the rest. And I don't know if um, uh, how the essential services are being treated, you know, in terms of 
if water quality is enough of a nexus, someone says, oh, well, we continue that work as long as you're not violating uh, safe working distances forever and stuff like that. Um, and the solid waste, so let me pause there. Um, the list I had for people to check in with includes ANR, uh, AG, NRCS, and the RPCs and some representative watershed groups. Uh, can anyone think of anybody else that we might want to touch base with to, uh, to follow up on that? I, I, I don't can't think of anybody immediately. I, I, again, I think my concern, I think all of our concerns has to do with uh, making certain that whatever we're doing, we're not pulling away from other resources at this time. In other words, you know, our priorities might be trumped by some of the other things happening. And we're just keeping an eye, as you've said in previous meetings, on ledge council's needs elsewhere, as well as other possible needs elsewhere. Yeah, good point and a good reminder. Um, and you know, I'll count on Luke and Michael to speak up and tell us if we're ever asking them to do something when you have something more pressing, um, I don't know, economic development or health and welfare or probes or who knows where. The, the one thing that I, I wanted to offer is you, uh, EPA just put out guidance that they will not be enforcing, um, that they're just going to focus on administration, oversight, and permitting. Uh, you might want to talk to A&R if they're going to follow a similar uh, strategy uh, in order to, to maximize their resources and, and their timing right now. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone else? So, okay, so that's, uh, I think, fairly straightforward on water quality stuff. Um, so the other piece I left out there was the, um, because of the, whatever, challenges to the state's budget because of all these delayed receipts, the other thing that the pro temp said, please check in with your, the, the agencies and departments you work with to make sure that um, financial constraints that are developing day by day aren't having an impact on their operations. So it's really uh, fiscal and personnel issues, I think, that are going to be the first impacts. So then uh, if there's nothing more there than on solid waste, um, again, this just seems like a check-in to make sure that um, there was an issue came up with septage last week that I think they were short staffed at a wastewater treatment facility. And so a um, truck, you know, that was pumping septage out of people's septic tanks couldn't unload. Um, I don't know if you've heard anything more, Michael, about that. Uh, the agency is um working with septage companies to try and find wastewater treatment facilities that will accept um, their septage. Uh, they understand it's a problem and they're trying to, to find alternatives for the septage companies. Um, there's a kind of a corresponding issue. Um, some of the farm fields that are where septage is applied are coming back testing. Um, for PFAS um, in uh, the soil. So that, that can become an issue for that farm uh, because the feed that they grow on the field is eaten by the cows and is bioaccumulated into the cow. Um, so that, that's, septage has got kind of multiple issues going on right now. Okay, on the... Um... PFAS bioaccumulating in cows, um, which doesn't sound like a, a good thing for the cows, is it, uh, but is it, does that have an impact on ability to ship milk produced by those cows? Yes. Uh, the co-op reserves the right to not, um, not ship the milk because it's uh, what they would call contaminated. Okay. So um, have you been working with the ag agency and, uh, sorry, with, well, ag agency and also 
Senate Ag, uh, are they aware of this going on? Uh, they're they're both the the agency is working on it. Senate Senator Starr at least is aware of it. Um, so they're they're trying to figure out ways to address the issue. Okay, I'm trying to think of what the alternatives are. I mean, you could spread in non-farm fields, right? And or, or you do not grow feed on on that field. Okay. Um, all right, and and, uh, and then in the next bucket here, um, energy issues. So uh, I thought we could double back and make sure that there are no problems with the folks that we checked in with before. Um, the, you know, the utilities finance manages utilities. So I would think of normal utility oversight work continuing in finance and the complementary. I mean, we could just verify that things are going fine and no new issues have come up. Um, the, uh, but one thing I was thinking is other energy stuff around it. So for instance, how is this impacting efficiency Vermont and weatherization work or efficiency work, or um, we're already having some challenges, you know, making our, meeting our goals. Um, does it mean that we're also having to put on hold all that kind of stuff? And again, Chris Rogers, Rogers here. I did, I've been in communication with some of the efficiency Vermont folks and they are, no longer doing assessments or in the field work. So I would say, yeah, they're pretty much stymied at this point working at home. Right, right. You can't really do much of an energy audit right. remotely. Right. Yep. Thank you. Um, and as a quick look towards Bill, I, I don't know if people have other issues. You said, you know, I mean, We've all been getting bombarded with. Um, Senator, Senator Bray, I have a yeah. quick question. What about um, potentially delaying the implementation of the plastic bag ban, just because we are hearing some concern in some jurisdictions starting to do that right now, just with health and grocery stores, and even just seeing people in lines. Um, I don't think it makes sense to charge people if they're running into a grocery store to get some items, you know, when they have the opportunity to. Okay. Well, let's think about it, discuss it. I know that this has come up because um, last week, Maine, which was you know gonna go to a single use bag ban on the 22nd of April, uh, postponed. Uh, so there's, there's that implementation piece. For us, it's July 1st, so that we have time um, on, uh, who knows what July 1 will look like to us in 30 right. days, you know. Um, the other thing that's happened, though, uh, I know a Shaw's store, or maybe that's every Shaw's, plus um, the co-op store in Middlebury asked people to stop bringing in reusable bags. And next door in New Hampshire, Sununu banned reusable bags. So I had been in, I've been in touch with the Department of Health and a &R over the, the last week on this issue. And I said, are you recommending any changes? Um, and health said no and ANR concurred because hmm. uh, in essence bags are um, one of the lowest um, you know risk vectors going on they you know if you start with the shopping cart you touch the shopping basket the shelves etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. so right but I think one of the concerns too is just having capacity for them so my uncle's a superintendent for school yeah. district in New York State and they're using single use bags to deliver the lunches so that they can leave them on doors for oh, sure. students. So I just, I don't know what our capacity and how our bill reads are. Would a school district be able to buy single use bags for that use? You know, if we're in a capacity where we're trying to use it for lunches or other yeah. things we're trying to give out. Um, but ours doesn't go into effect until July. Right. right, but we just canceled school till June, so. There's obviously there's reason to believe that this could still be going on some capacity through sure, July. Sure. And but I'm just trying to think of, I mean, whether or not it's a priority to deal with right now, only because I mean, there's it's not like other states where 
we have something that we would extend the deadline on. Ours, again, they, they may, everybody may be back up and running by June 1. Well, so it's a, you know, I think you're, I take your point. So let's make sure, I mean, I think, you know, the bag ban, just as a reminder for all of us, uh, is at the point of checkout. So that really wouldn't apply to a school anyway. They could still be sourcing single use bags and, and using them. Um, but yeah, I, I, mean, I thought I heard that the administration had pushed that timeline, the implementation of that back. Am I wrong? Uh, what I yeah, are you talking about uh, the seven one uh, the plastic bag seven yeah. one yeah. So I saw a request from Aaron Segrist on behalf of Vermont Grocers to push it back to January wow. one of twenty one. Uh, mm -hmm. Roll it back six months, and that came through while I was just wrapping up, you know, a couple of days of conversation with Health and ANR. So I'm not sure where the administration will go. I mean, they could respond to grocers and say, we're pushing that back. Um, the, for me, the science and medicine people are the ones I would like to rely on to guide whatever we do, uh, let the chips fall where they may. Um, but so far, a and and health are saying no need to change practices at stores. I mean, uh, it's a little, uh, when, if we start having a reusable, if we, if we ban reusable shopping carts, um, then I'll be thinking about reusable bags next, you know, but I would do it in that order because a shopping cart, everyone is handling a bag at least is only yours. And if you're feeling very conscientious, you could wash the thing before you come back. It only takes a little soap and water to, uh, well, like, that's true, water. but they're trying to, they're trying to protect their employees and like price chopper their their folks won't even touch reusable bags now. And there are some stores that have outright banned the reusable bags during this time. And it's just a matter of knowing that when they grab that plastic bag, it's clean. And if they touch somebody's reusable bag, it's not necessarily. And most of the uh, stores are now providing sanitary wipes to wipe down your cart and stuff. I'm not saying that it, that it eliminates the chances. I agree, everything you pull off the shelf, somebody's already touched. Um, but they're trying to protect their employees. Right. Well, right. So, we'll, uh, Senator McDonald. Um, I think we got a lot of difference, differences of opinion on something that just came up. Why don't we sit on this for a week and um, stores may have to order or not order depending on what we, a decision we make before July 1st. But um, I think we've got all the various possibilities oh. and we might want to weigh in on this next week after we've thought about it a bit. Sure. Um, I, it's not really well said. emergent. So, uh, and stores will make their own policies anyway. Uh, so we'll keep going and see where the administration goes with it. Um, so again, you know, I just asked people to take a look at the list of bills in that email or go, I, I think I also put in the email a link to our bills and committee list, uh, which is a lot longer and you might want to look ahead. Um, my sense is that, you know, we might want to focus on clearing out kind of what was in our in basket at the time of uh, back on the 13th um, before going on to major bills. Uh, the concern I have, uh, frankly, about something like Act 250 and Global Warming Solutions Act is that I think uh, I'm certainly, you know, ready, willing, able, I think we all are to, to work on that. But I also think they're complicated issues that even if in ideal circumstances, like all of us in the building with all our regular work uh, tools at hand, we would probably spend weeks um, going through through those because there's there's a lot in them and um, so I'd rather you know not have us try to push something through with not enough testimony uh, especially Act 250 which is really critical to what goes on in the state um, but that's it from from I would point. tend to agree with that yeah Chris I would tend to agree with that I think even if we were in the building, those two bills could completely consume the rest of our 
uh, legislative session, and and we may still feel like we would like more information. So I don't see how that could possibly pulled be pulled off in, in uh, trying to meet like this. Especially the the need that we would have for ledge council to be with us constantly on that. And I, yeah, there there is bombarded, if not more, by uh, emails from all of us, concerns, trying to probably support their their colleagues who are have jurisdiction in economic development, et cetera. Right. Um, one, Some, actually, I would say, unless there's yeah. somewhat irresponsible, possibly. Yeah. Um, and it, it could also be that we might find something uh, relatively narrow and helpful for in, the thing that I'm thinking of is the trails related provisions. So let's, if I'm thinking a little optimistically about the summer and fall, our, our recreation, outdoor recreation industry has been hit hard by what's happened in the last three weeks. And um, if, thing, if it's gonna be safe and healthy to be outdoors and recreating this summer and fall, um, maybe doing something narrow on trails to help ensure that everyone who's trying to do that kind of, run that kind of business um, has an opportunity to keep going as opposed to leaving that Act 250 as re it relates to trails question hanging with uncertainty for another full year. That might be something we could look into. Fine, sure. Yeah, and I think that's ex extremely important um, because the, I know that the groups have been working on an agreement and as you said I think tourism business as a whole is going to take a hell of a shot because people aren't going to be coming for the next couple months and even after the COVID-19 problem is gone I think they're still not going to be apt to go on a vacation for a while. Right, right. Okay. Senator Bray I'm afraid I have to jump off. <clears throat> um, but I think we are actually unless anyone has anything else you want to put on the table so again We'll, I, I'll work with Jude Lang. If you have any witnesses you want us to hear from, please just email me, let me know. Otherwise I'll line up sort of standard folks that we would hear from on those three topics we went through briefly before. And if that's uh, otherwise, I think from on my, on my side, my list is complete. Anything else? Thank you. Great, um, have a great weekend, everybody. Good weekend. Goodbye, See y'all. Thank you.